Good day everyone. This video takes a closer look at SSI driving path analysis tools. Let's start with some definitions from the NDIA's Planning and Scheduling Excellence Guide section 10.1. This guide makes a distinction between critical path and driving path. However, the analysis uses exactly the same method. The only difference is the point in the schedule where the analysis begins or ends depending on how you want to look at it. Critical path is defined as the longest continuous sequence of tasks from time now to the program end date. Program end date is the key here. If you delay any task on the critical path, you also delay the project's end date. Tasks with some schedule flexibility are known as near critical paths. You may have heard of these as secondary or tertiary critical path. There is no official definition of the parameters defining secondary and tertiary critical paths. You might define tasks that can be delayed by one week as secondary and tasks with two weeks of schedule flexibility as tertiary. A driving path analysis is identical to the critical path, except it's the longest sequence of tasks from time now to an interim program milestone instead of the end date of the project. In other words, you get to pick the end date and the analysis is performed to that point, ignoring all tasks that start after that point in the schedule. And as with the critical path, you have parameters that define secondary and tertiary or near driving paths as well. SSI tool supports both critical and driving path definitions. If you want to follow the definition of critical path, just pick the project's ending milestone. Pick any other point in the schedule for a driving path analysis. I have a few more presentation slides showing how this is done using SSI tools. Then I'll demonstrate SSI tools using an example schedule. Here's an example schedule and I have selected row 10. It's not the end of the project, rather it's an interim milestone named Production Readiness Review. But I still want to see why it finishes on September 18th, and SSI Tools will show that analysis with just one click. With any row selected in Microsoft Project, click the button named Trace Driving Path below SSI Analysis Tools to perform a quick driving path analysis to the selected task or milestone. Or you can expand that button's options to repeat the last driving path analysis regardless of the selected row using Quick Trace to Last Task. Additionally, you can pick the options named Open Advanced Trace Tools form. There you can customize your tracing options. For example, you can add near critical or near driving path tasks to get secondary and tertiary paths. If you have SSI analysis tools, you can pause the video now and give this a try using an example project or a project of your own. This page shows two display options. You can pick display options using the advanced trace tools form. On the left hand side, I'm showing the result in a cascading waterfall and I'm ignoring the project's work breakdown structure and reordering the tasks according to their start and finish dates. On the right, I'm showing the same tasks, but I'm showing them within the context of the project's work breakdown structure and in their natural order. Pause the video and give this a try yourself. Open the Advanced Trace Tools form and look for the display options. I made this PowerPoint page using our Presentation Professional tool. It's a great way to put the result of a driving path analysis into a report for your team or your customer. You can also add notes to the analysis showing the root cause driver of a delayed program event, and you can show notes describing the corrective action measures the team is implementing to get it back on schedule. Presentation Professional is an SSI tools add-in for PowerPoint. If you have it as well as our Microsoft Project tools, look for additional videos on our YouTube channel or sign up for training so you can make a chart like this one. To add a secondary and tertiary driving path analysis, you must select the Advanced Trace Tools form from the Trace Driving Path Task options. In this example, I've defined the secondary path as tasks having up to five days of schedule flexibility, and tertiary path tasks as those that could be delayed between five and ten days before they would impact the primary analysis. The parameters for secondary and tertiary can be user-defined. My selection of five days for each is just one example of how you might define those values. This example shows how SSI analysis tools can group tasks as primary, secondary, and tertiary drivers. 
I selected the Test Readiness Review event, which you see at the bottom of the primary task group for this example. Primary tasks have no schedule flexibility. That means they can't be delayed at all without impacting the Test Readiness Review event. Secondary tasks are considered near driving path tasks. They can be delayed somewhere within the range of one to five days before impacting test readiness review. Tertiary tasks are also near-term tasks, but they have even more schedule flexibility than those in the secondary group. In this example, those tasks can be delayed anywhere between six and 10 days before impacting the test readiness review. Pause the video and give this a try if you like. Open the Advanced Trace Tools form from the Trace Driving Path Task Options. Look for the options for Secondary and Tertiary Path towards the bottom of that form. Here's another example of how you might display the Primary, Secondary, and Tertiary as a PowerPoint page using SSI Presentation Professional. Now I'll demonstrate how to use SSI Trace Tools using an example Microsoft Project file. I'll demonstrate the tools using this example project. Below the SSI Analysis Tools menu, I'm looking for the button named Trace Driving Path. First, I'll select an item in the schedule, row number 10 in this example. Then I'll click the button, wait a couple seconds, and displayed now is the longest series of tasks leading to production readiness review. These are the tasks that are determining the current September 18th date. If my team needs to accelerate the September 18th date for production readiness review, they'll need to address the schedule for one or more of the tasks that lead up to that September 18th date. Working with my team, we can pick one or more of these tasks, accelerate its duration, and see what effect that has on production readiness review. If I'm working in another section of the schedule, I can repeat the trace to production readiness review no matter where I am by selecting the option named quick trace to last task here. This will repeat the trace for production readiness review regardless of the task that I have currently selected in Microsoft Project. Now let me show you some additional display and trace options. I'm going to open the Advanced Trace Tools form. Instead of tracing predecessors, I'm going to look forward and trace successors. This is going to show me all of the tasks that will be impacted if the production readiness review is delayed. This is a forward look rather than a backward look. I'm looking at successors rather than predecessors. And these are all the successors that would be impacted if production readiness review were delayed by even a single day. Now I'll go back to the predecessor trace options and we'll take a look at display options. I'm going to display the result within the context of the project summary tasks. This will keep the project's work breakdown structure or summary hierarchy and show the results within that context. For my final demonstration, I'll select the waterfall option for display, and I'll get the secondary path. This is going to include near-term driving path tasks that have anywhere between 1 and 10 days of schedule flexibility before they impact the production readiness review. Here's the result, and notice how the result is grouped by the primary tasks meaning these have no schedule flexibility. If you accelerate or delay these tasks, they'll have an immediate impact on the production readiness review. And the secondary group. Some of these can move by as much as 10 days before they'll start impacting that September 18th date. Thanks for watching this SSI Tools video. Be sure to practice driving path analysis tools on your own. Also, you might want to subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you'll be notified whenever we add new content.